Welcome all. In this video, we will understand the concept of stress, which is also known as engineering stress. We will see what is stress at a point and uh, how we can define the stress tensor. So, instead of starting this video from a very uh, generalized definition of a stress, so nowadays we all use the term stress very frequently in our day to day life. Whenever we feel external pressure that may be from personal issues, from professional life or from social life, we generally say that uh, we are in stress. So, in the recent years, we have also uh, seen that the recent year uh, has been a very stressful year due to this pandemic. So, the term stress was first coined by, in, by Henselle in medicine. So, it was not coined uh, firstly in engineering, but it was used in uh, medicine by Henselle, who was the professor of biochemistry at McGill University. So, he defined the stress in his research paper as non-specific response of the body to any demand. So, whenever our body is subjected to some external physical, mental or emotional pressure, then body creates a response to those external influencing factors and the response is known as stress. So, the generalized definition of stress, if you will see, it is the response of the body to physical, mental or emotional pressure. So, the catch here is that whenever our body is uh, disturbed by some external influencing factors and body creates a response. So, this term response is the key factor which we, uh, which we will use in our engineering also. So, stress in engineering. So, stress in uh, engineering is also known as simply stress or engineering stress. So, we will try to understand this stress in terms of atomic bonding. So, we all know that atoms are held together by interatomic forces. So, in metals, atoms have periodic arrangement and there are electrons which are revolve, which are uh, free electrons which are moving uh, inside the uh, materials which also creates uh, helps in conductivity. So, the atoms held together by atomic uh, bonding can be represented with the help of a spring or spring ball model. Uh, this can be modeled with the help of a, uh, a model having springs and balls. So, here this uh, white zigzag line is representing the spring which in turn is representing the atomic bonding. So, here what we will consider, we will consider two atoms held together by a spring and they are subjected to external force. So, this external force is trying to elongate the or trying to move the atoms apart from one another. So, if you have applied enough force then these, these atoms will move uh, apart from one another and spring will uh, get stretched out. But the inherent effect of this uh, spring will be try to pull back the atoms to their original position. So, means here spring is exerting a force and this force is known as the resisting force. So, here means if you are disturbing the atoms from the equilibrium position, they are trying to uh, regain back their equilibrium position and this uh, regaining back the equilibrium position is due to the resisting force and this resisting force is related to the stress. So, stress if you have to define it in a very simple language then we can say it is the quantity which is used to describe the effect of internal resisting forces and how internal resisting forces are determined they are determined by the method of sections which is already explained in my previous video so in method of sections we pass planes through a body at a point and the those planes cut the body in equal halves and in two halves and we um, analyze the one section of the body for the resisting forces. So, the assumption in strength of metal is that the material is in equilibrium and the body is in equilibrium and material is continuous, cohesive and isotropic. 
Continuous means there is a uniform distribution of matter without having no voids. Means there are there is no empty space and matter is uniformly distributed in the material. And cohesive means in a material all portions are connected together with one another and there is no breakage inside it. And isotropic means if you take any point in the material and at one particular point if you will take any direction then in every direction the properties will be same. For example if you take a point in this body and you measure the Young's modulus of elasticity in any direction then the Young's modulus of elasticity will be same. This is known as isotropic nature. So materials should be continuous, cohesive and isotropic. So now <coughs> what we will do, we will have a body. The, this body is now subjected to these four forces shown with these blue arrows. These four forces are trying to pull apart the body. But we have considered that body is in equilibrium. So we will cons uh, consider a point. We will pass a plane through the body at that point. Such that the plane will cut the body in two halves. So if I am analyzing the bottom part of the body. You can also analyze the top part of the body. Then in the bottom part. You can see there are two blue arrows. That means these forces are pulling the body in the downward directions. But the body is in equilibrium, so means there is a development of some internal resisting forces which are trying to keep the body in the equilibrium. And these are the resisting forces which we are concerned about. So here these directions can be upward or downward, but net direction here you can uh, see that it should be in the upward direction so that this body is in equilibrium. So now to describe the state of stress at the considered point in a body, we will take three mutually perpendicular planes which I have marked as 1, 2 and 3. For the convenience of understanding, we have to pass these parallel and per these perpendicular planes through a point one by one and by passing these three mutually perpendicular planes, we will get a cube of very small dimension or infinite asymmetric dimension which we will see in the coming slide. So we have passed plane 1. So by passing this plane 1, we have this internal resisting forces. Now I am considering a very in, uh, in small area or infinitesimal area. Then the, on this area, there will be internal resisting forces developed. So uh, there will be internal resisting forces here. So these forces will be along the x direction, along the y direction and along the z direction. So along the x direction and the y direction, these are the forces which are parallel to this considered area while the z direction force is perpendicular to it. So now stress is force over area. So if you will divide each component of this force with area of this of area which you have considered this small area then you will get stress. So the stress will also have the components along the parallel to this area as well as perpendicular to this area. So if you will consider the force which is perpendicular to this considered area will create a component of stress which is known as normal stress or by the force which is perpendicular to this area will create normal stress which is denoted by sigma but if you will divide the force components which are along this area will create the stress which is known as a shear stress and is denoted by tau. So if I am dividing sigma f sorry this delta fz with delta a delta a is the area of uh, this small section or this small plane which I have considered here and if you will take the limit of area approaches to zero then you will have normal stress component. Similarly if you will divide the x and y components with the area with the area of this small uh, or the small area then 
and the limit area is approaching to zero then you will have the shear components so this is known as the stress at a point means ratio of force over area where limit of area is approaching to zero is known as the stress at a point so this is also an important question which is usually asked in iit's interviews as well as in psus that what is stress at a point so you have to say that it is the ratio of force over area where limit of area approaches to zero now in this on this considered area i can have three axes two are parallel to this area one is perpendicular to this area so on the perpendicular sides i have normal stress which is represented by sigma on the parallel side i have stress which is represented by tau so there is a nomenclature that the stress has two components these two subscripts first represents the plane or face second represents the direction so if i am talking about plane then you have to consider plane perpendicular to the given axis and here the given axis is the first subscript so here first subscript is z so means you have to consider a plane which is perpendicular to the z axis so you can see this is the plane the plane one through which body we have cut is the is perpendicular to the z axis or you can see that this plane this area which we have considered is also parallel to that plane so we can say that this area is perpendicular to the z axis or in this another way you have to take face having normal along the given axis given axis is first subscript means you have to consider a face which normal of which is along the z axis so when we will have all other three perpendicular planes also then this definition will become clear so there is a trick to remember that you can uh, remember it with pd so pd partial differentiation you, in this way or you can re remember it or you can create another small trick for yourselves by which you can easily remember now we have the same body now we will pass another plane plane number 2 which is parallel to xz you can see from here it is parallel to xz direction so from that from the point in the body through which we have passed the earlier plane we will pass the plane number 2 it will cut the body in two halves so there will also be a development of internal resisting forces and these internal resisting forces are trying to keep the body in equilibrium now if you you can take on this plane you will also have directions which are parallel as well as perpendicular to this so now here you can see this is the plane which has its normal along the y direction or you can say that if you have to take the y direction then the y direct perpendicular plane to the y direction is the is this side plane so now here you can consider that this plane has its normal along the y direction so first subscript will be y so here the stress components will have first subscript as y and second subscript will represent the direction along which the that particular stress component is there so here it is along the z direction here it is along the x direction now we will pass third perpendicular plane which is parallel to the y z direction so here you can see this plane is parallel to the y z direction if we will pass this plane to the same point in the same body same section body then we will have a body which will look like this so in 2d it is difficult to represent the actual shape but it will usually look like this so here it is the section body if when we have passed the plane number one it is from the plane number two now plane number three has been passed so now this plane i have marked it uh, considered it uh, in 
in a dark brown in a brown color so that you can easily understand it so this plane has its normal along x direction means its a first subscript will be x so first subscript will be x and the second subscript represent the direction so you can say that uh, if this is the for the parallel we use the tau and for normal we use sigma so for parallel we can write tau x because this plane has its normal along x and now it is in the z direction so it it is represented by tau x z and here this is along parallel to this a plane so it is tau x and along the y direction is represented by, represented by tau x y so what we have done we have considered a body or we have considered a point in the body we have passed three mutually perpendicular planes through that point on the body and by passing these three mutually perpendicular planes we will get a cube like structure or we will get a cube of infinitesimal small dimension means if you will pass these three mutually perpendicular planes then you can slice out a cube from that body and on that cube there will be different stress components actually in different uh, books it is uh, this method of sections is explained in a different way so this is one of the way in which you can uh, you can find that uh, they have explained that how you can form this uh, cube of infinitesimal dimensions so here you can consider the body suppose i am passing this plane one through this body such that this plane is dividing the body in um, two halves so now draw another plane at infinitesimal distance to the first plane now what you have to do you have to draw another two sets of planes which are mutually perpendicular to each other so we'll pass second plane which is plane parallel to xz so this plane number 2 is parallel to xz and it is perpendicular to the plane number 1 now we'll pass plane number 3 which is parallel to zy so there as there will be set of parallel planes so there will be another plane number 3 now you can see that in this body you will have this small cubical element so with this uh, visual uh, this diagram you can easily see that how from a body a cubical element can be sliced out similar uh, in similar way this can be uh, done in the previous body which we have considered in that body we have considered only three sides of the plane or three sides of a cube or three planes from which you have sliced out a cube and here we have considered all six faces so this cube you can see it in in last way it has on every side you have parallel and perpendicular components so these parallel components are represented with the help of white color and normal components are presented with the help of red color so this is just another way of explaining that how this cubical element will be formed in the body now i have drawn here all these three mutually perpendicular planes and their direction vectors which are normal as well as parallel when you place uh, these mutually perpendicular planes closer to one another you can see they are forming a cube which is represented which is represented here and this bold color are representing the stress components on every face along its normal direction and along its parallel direction so this is the general state of a stress so general state of a stress at a point is represented with the help of a cubical element and this is also important question which is mostly asked in phd interviews in faculty interviews as well as in psu interviews at iits and iits so 
here the general state of stress at a point is represented with the help of a cube cubical element which has the normal components as well as perpendicular components so let me again explain this nomenclature so suppose i am considering this second plane so this plane has its normal vector along which direction so if you draw a normal over this plane it will point out in the y direction means first subscript will be y and perpendicular direction is a stress component in perpendicular direction is represented by sigma in normal component is it is represented by tau so you can write sigma y here we can write tau y and you can also write here tau y now second subscript represent direction so it is along the z direction so you can write z here you can write x here so in this way you can i hope you have understood that how this nomenclature works so now we have to write the these components in a concise form so we write it in the form of a matrix so we so how we will write so you can write firstly x y z along this vertical direction and x y z along the horizontal direction and here this horizontal direction or rows represent plane and vertical direction or these columns represent directions so rows represent planes column represent direction so first element will be x x and first row represent means represents plane and means it is the first subscript so here it will be x so first element will be xx second element xy third element z third element xz so first subscript here is x means you have to find a plane which has its normal along x direction so along among these three planes this plane number 3 is the plane which has its normal along the x direction means you have to consider this plane and you have to write its component in the first row so first is first element is xx means sigma x you have to write second element xy so tau xy you have to write and third element is xz so this tau xz you have to write and the normal component you can see that they are they are along the diagonal of the matrix now consider this third row so here the first element will be zx second zy third zz means first subscript is z means from these three planes you have to find a plane which has its normal along z direction and here it is plane number one means the components of this plane number one you have to write down it in the third row so first will be zx so zx is parallel component so it is tau zx second one is zy so zy is tau zy third one is zz means it is sigma zz and this whole matrix form is known as the tensor form of stress so tensor is another concept so i will cover it with the help of another video and stress is a second order tensor so we'll see what is a tensor and why uh, stress is known as the second order tensor so this was all for today so i hope you have enjoyed this video so we have started with the very generalized definition of stress we have understood the concept of resisting forces by uh, relating the stress in terms of atomic bonding then in a body we have seen that how a cubical element of infinitesimal dimensions can be formed with the help of passing three mutually perpendicular planes to one point and when we have formed this cubical element then on the each side of cubical element we have stress component which is parallel as well as perpendicular and we can write those components in the form of a matrix which is known as the tensor form of stress so i hope you have enjoyed this video thank you for your time